that. Hi everybody, Tiffany Solorio here. I'm going to be creating this really fun um, art journal page. And before we get started, I'm going to do the announcements. So the first one is calling all planner lovers out there in celebration of our new My Prima Planners. We are having a launch party. We are so excited to share this new line of products with you and we want you to be a part of the fun. Join us October 15, 2016 for amazing planner launch party. Receive one of four of our new planners. Get up close and personal with our planners and accessories, mini workshops, demos, and much more. Limited spaces available. Visit myprimaplanner.com to register and for more information. And also, if you're on Instagram, I believe they have a My Prima Planner Instagram as well, so make sure you check that out. And um, two is go to Facebook Prima Marketing Flowers page to win two tickets to attend our launch party. To win, go to our page and comment under the party post. Simply tag a friend you'd go with to the Prima launch party and comment below letting us know what you are most excited about. We will pick the winner September 1st, 2016. And three is next show coming up is the stint stencil feature with Sharon on Tuesday, August 23rd, which is my birthday, by the way, at 11 a.m. Pacific time. She is creating a gorgeous home decor project using the new home decor stencils and limited edition color bloom two sprays. See the project on today's Prima blog post. Prima.typepad.com So, let me make sure... Um, so yeah, so make sure you go to the myprimaplanner.com and Prima has tons of, mi um, not mixed media, um, media, um, social media <laughs> things like on Instagram and Facebook and different, um, uh, groups and things so make sure you check it all out so we're gonna get started but first I want to do something fun and because really watercolors are pretty they're pretty new to me I mean I took art in high school but I pretty much failed it so um, we're just gonna play around with uh, the watercolors and the different mediums. So I just pulled out a bunch of different mediums and we're just going to really quickly just kind of see how they play on there just for you guys so that you guys can see. So they have some 3D gloss gel, clear gesso, 3D matte gel, uh, white gesso, modeling paste, and then this is the chalk paint. So, and then this one's blank. So we're going to set this aside really quickly and we're just going to play just real quick because I feel like my pages are going to go really quick. So, so this one is the um, Tropicals and the number for this one is 584-269. And I have my water brush here. And when I'm using the watercolors, I always like to have a paper towel so that I can kind of dab off some of the excess water if I need to and clean it off if I didn't do so from the time before. So um, let's pick kind of a bold color. And we're going to do the chalk paint. And I don't know if they're all going to work the same, if, you know, what's going to happen. So... And obviously the drying is going to be different as well. So. That's kind of neat. It, let me um, take off the autofocus so that it. So 
So that went on smooth and let me see if you can, yeah, it's pretty much on there. So I'm thinking the gels are gonna be, so that's that one. All right, let's do the 3D gloss gel. And this one is fun because I know that this one you can really play around with it. And you have to let this dry before you do anything. That one's a little bit more opaque than the, than on the chalk paint. And the gel, it creates a kind of a, a water resist, a resist, not a, yeah. So you can just wipe it off, but if you leave it there to dry, I, let's see at the end of the show if it's, if it'll stay. So, and let's move on to the clear gesso. Let's see if that one, eh, that one's a little bit harder to wipe off, but it's still not there. It's still not stuck. I think the only one that was really so far was the chalk paint, which is interesting. So that one's a clear gesso. And the 3D matte gel, I'm guessing is gonna be similar to the gloss gel. And you can just wipe that right off. So that's that. White gesso, pretty sure it's gonna be pretty similar to the clear gesso. Yeah, it's kind of, it's it's on there but not completely and then the modeling paste I'm interested in this one because it did really well with the light paste so yeah you can still kind of wipe it off but We'll come back to these later. And then this is kind of, it's almost like, um, it's really smooth paper. It doesn't, I mean, there's something on it, I think, because it's the art journal paper. So, so yeah, that just soaks right in there. So this one's blank. Hello, everybody who's just joining. And obviously that's already soaked in there so you can't wipe it off. So just wanted to kind of play around with them just to see, just in case you guys were wondering. All right, let me move all this aside. I mean, in reality, obviously, I think, you know, the you're gonna want to get some watercolor paper Oop. and um, because obviously that is gonna be the best but just wanted to play around with it a little bit yeah okay let me get this back over here all right so what I did was I kind of took apart my journal which I'm not going to do today 
and I just took the two pages out and I'm gonna move this aside and I took the um, well I guess before I move on and was there any questions I was just kind of trying it out testing it <laughs> Well, I'll try to keep an eye out. Okay, so we are going to work on the paper. And um, I leave the paper in here. It's adhered on the top and the bottom. And sorry, I'm trying to um, get the brightness up just a tad for you guys because the sun's going down, so. All right, then what I did was I just kind of outlined where the pages were so that I knew like where, you know, it was going to be. And then that's, this is on the top of the paper is where I'm going to work. And then leaving it in the paper pad it will um, let your, um, what am I trying to say? It won't um, buckle the paper as much because it's laid flat. Okay, so first thing we're going to do, well, let me give you the number really quick. Um, and this is the 12 by 12 watercolor paper pad. And the number is 847753. Okay, and I am going to turn off the autofocus now. I know I said that before, but I think it finally focused. All right. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a Primus stencil, and this one is one of my favorites, and I actually had to get a new one because mine was all mucked up, and I, when I was trying to clean it, I ruined it. And I, you can find these at Hobby Lobby, at least my Hobby Lobby. Uh, the number for this is 582-869. Let me see, there is 20 sheets. Okay, so I'm trying to find the middle as best as possible. This doesn't have to be perfect. Mm, looks about right. I'm gonna take spatula, silicone brush, I should say and the light paste, and this number is uh, 961404. I love this stuff, and you don't really need too much. Okay. And just brush it on. I love these doily stencils. They're so pretty. Just wanna make sure I get all those little intricate holes. Okay. Grab a paper towel. I'm 
going to clean my stencil really quickly. And while that's drying, sorry, I'm going to stick that there so that it will focus. I am going to take the stamp set and stamp my uh, feathers out. And I use this uh, stamp set here from IOD. And the number for this is blocks I move them okay so I'm going to stamp four and you want to use a permanent ink which I put somewhere oh no there it is hiding behind all these art mediums over here okay And I like stays on. Let me see. Should have done this ahead of time because I'm not the greatest stamper when it comes to stays on. I feel like it because it dries really quick. So I, don't, I feel like I don't stamp fast enough. So I might have to do quite a bit of these just to get good good images. See, didn't go fast enough. And also because it's watercolor paper, I think it, um, not that it has a hard time, but you kind of have to get the stamp a little bit more juicy. <laughs> so the image will come up really well. I think I should have re-inked my stays on here. I think that might be the problem. You guys can't even see, I'm sorry. I wish you guys could yell at me through the screen. <laughs> I think well maybe just one okay all right moving back to the page here I'm going to dry this it's pretty dry the Light paste dries pretty fast.
set. Yeah, the stamp set has some butterflies and a bike and some sentiments. Oops. It's really cute. Some flowers, a little bee or fly. This reminds me of these big black beetles we get out. I actually um, had to kill a few of them today. Um, anyways, but yeah, that's a really nice stamp set if you like a lot of images. All right, so I'm going to try to get everything in here for you guys. So I'm using the um, classic watercolor confections and also the tropicals. And let me clean off my brush. Actually, gonna have to add more water. So to add more water, what I do is you just take off the top and then there's like this little black thing. Just pop it off. And I take my sprayer and just spray right inside. Okay, so first things, I'm just going to hit the watercolor paper with a little bit of water and I'm just going to kind of dab some of it off. Just want it a little bit moist so that the color can move around really well because you want a really nice watercolor effect. See. So, it's black. It's probably this stays on. Okay, first I am going to use some soft teal just kind of as a base for the top. gonna spray it and then spray some water because you want it to be a really nice watercolor look and so the more water kind of the better and I'm just gonna move the paper around a little bit can dab some off just kind of give like a light and dark effect and then we're gonna take the brush and I'm trying to remember which color I used let me see I think I used this blue here I think I kind of mixed them together so I used, there's no number, well there was numbers I think on them, but I don't have them. So um, kind of mix these two together and just kind of make a pool of the color with the water. And because the soft teal is lighter, it's going to just kind of make a really nice kind of blend it all together and you can squeeze out what I'm squeezing out the water as I'm putting it on in some parts because that way it will just kind of blend all out together I'm going to take the paper and kind of tilt it up and that way it will run where it wants to go. And then you just kind of keep adding as you like.
kind of want the top to be darker so I think it was this one that's darker so I'm going to add a little bit of water as I put that color down and I'm just picking the color up um, right now from the pan so let me see if I can get it all in here going to dab this up. There we go. I think I got it all in there now. All right. So I'm taking that dark blue and because I used a lot of water, it's just kind of blending and going where it wants to really nicely. Kind of help the color go where you want it to. Actually need to keep going out this way. And I'm actually going to add a little bit of water first, actually, on the sides here. And on this side, I'm going to add a little bit of that soft teal again. And it takes a little bit of patience, but I mean, if like, if I'm having a really bad day or just, I don't know, just anything, I love just opening up my art journal and just creating just whatever comes to mind because I feel like it's one of the few things well, not one of the few things, because I don't really follow any rules with anything as like scrapbooking or like anything, but you can't really go wrong with art journaling because like I said before, it just, it comes from your heart and whatever's in your heart is gonna come out, I guess, or in your mind. And it all just will look beautiful. All right, I'm gonna move on to the kind of purple shades and this is purple here. It looks really dark, it's purple. And again, I'm just gonna add it to up here with some water first. go up where that blue is and that teal color I hope this isn't boring for you guys <laughs> hopefully you guys are following along it's actually really relaxing for me so And then this time I'm actually going to kind of turn, um, tilt the paper up instead of down, well down and up so that it will kind of mix in with that blue a little bit and the teal color. And then now I'm going to go directly to the color with my brush and kind of add darker where I want. 
I like to add lighter and then just kind of add, you know, it more concentrated where I want and later. So I'm adding a lot of water on this side because I want it to be pretty like, you know, watercolor effect. And then I don't know if you could see, but there's like some blue showing through. I'm just going to tilt this a little bit. And I'm going to add more water or color, tilt it a little bit down. Okay, next, I'm just gonna kinda dab this up a little bit. All right, next I'm going to use the Cotton Candy uh, Color Bloom Spray, and the number is 573737. I'm going to add water to the bottom so that it kind of flows nice. brush because that has a lot of purple on it. I'm just going to take the brush and just kind of has some purple on it too. All right, I'm just going to take it and just kind of move it around. Next, I'm going to take the purple again and I'm just going to squirt it on and as I squirt it on, I'm going to tilt the paper so that it can just kind of flow where it wants. Just like this. And you can kind of help it out if you want. And of course, you can use, you know, whatever colors you like. concentrated color up here and then kind of squirt a little bit of water. Okay, so I'm going to kind of dab some of this up and because I used the color bloom underneath, some of that will show through. So I hope you guys are still with me. If you have any questions, let me know. Hopefully Carrie hasn't texted me. All right. So I really like actually how this looks. 
So I think I'm just going to let it run just a little bit. I'm just going to add a little bit of water right here. And So this, um, at the beginning I had showed how the watercolors reacted to the different mediums like the modeling paste, the gesso, and um, what I used here is the uh, light paste. So as you could see, it just, it holds it really well, I think. So I think I'm going to kind of get it blended just a tad bit more. And I want a little bit more blue. Actually, maybe did I use this blue? Maybe I use this blue. This one looks pretty dark. Mm, let's see. Maybe a tad bit of this one. because it's watercolor paper. It's a little bit forgiving. So you just add some water and kind of blend it out. Gonna use this blue again. let that blue run into that purple. Isn't this pretty? I love it. Love the watercolors which I was really intimidated at first, but once I started playing with them, I just fell in love with them. I think I was intimidated because I basically failed art class, like I said before, and because it's more, I don't know, I felt you had to be more artistic and not crafty, which I feel I'm crafty, but not really artistic. Um, I was really intimidated, but I played with them and now I love them and I use them a lot. So I'm just going to, well, I'm going to let that dry and I'm actually going to um, color my feathers down here and I'm going to use, what color did I use? Use the purple, which is down here. I'm going to spritz some water on them. I don't know if you guys can hear my um, air conditioning has been working pretty hard. So when it comes on and turns off, it, it's pretty loud. All right, so because there's water on them, I'm just going to do the middle section. And that was pretty concentrated more than I wanted. But I just want kind of the middle of the feather more than the outside of the feather. If that makes sense. All right, let me grab another paper towel. And I'm just going to kind of spritz some of the 
um, cotton candy color kind of on the outside. You're not really going to see the pink color that much, but just to kind of pull it all together. And then spritzing some more water. I'm just going to dab some of it off. And I'm, there's a million different ways you can do these feathers here. All right, let me dry this. So it might take a minute. So I'm gonna see if there's any questions. And um, did get it pretty wet, so. This watercolor paper can hold a lot of water. Okay, it's almost dry. It's just a tad bit damp. And what I want to do now is I'm going to add some splatters. I don't think it would be a project of mine if I didn't add splatters. So I'm going to just take the top off the color bloom, color bloom spray and just tap. We're going to add a bunch of different colors, splatters. So that was the cotton candy. Then I'm going to do the soft teal. There's a storm blowing in. All right, ooh, that was a lot. Okay. Next, I'm going to take the purple and add, oh, I'm out of water on that one again. I'm gonna take the purple and add a lot of water. And then I'm going to splatter with that. Then I'm gonna clean my brush and I'm gonna take the blue that I used and splatter with that. Okay, let me move these out of the way because I think it's pretty much done. Okay, and a little tip when you, um, because the watercolor paper, it comes adhered on the bottom and the top, I use my heat tool. Let me move my. Um, keyboard out of the way so I can move this up a little bit so you guys can see. So I hold it kind of open on one end. I don't know if you guys can see that. And then I move it just is it happens really fast. And then kind of keep moving. That way your paper won't rip. And then the same to the top. So I'm going to start on this side so I can work. Just like that. And I'm going to show you guys the back. So I added... Oh, oh geez. Come on. It won't let me show you the back. There's like barely any spots on the back. 
of the paper. So pretty good. Um, watercolor paper. All right, so the feathers, what I'm gonna do is just gonna cut off the bottom for now. And then I'm going to kind of tear them out. As you can see, I just kind of tore them out. Just kind of going along the stamped image here. Questions? Oh yes, I would not fussy cut these out. I think Miranda did. I'm pretty sure she did at one point. She's crazy. She a lot more patience than I do. All right. I just want to get my project done. I think that's what it is. That's why I don't. like to fussy cut too much oh my gosh I wish you guys can see the sunset it is so pretty there's like a storm coming in and it's like ugh, I wish you guys can see it it's so pretty <laughs> wish I could take a picture and I was worried because I was getting alerts on my phone and I was like oh my gosh every time it rains here or if it's even like the slightest, well not the slightest bit windy because it gets pretty darn windy here, but if it's windy, our power goes out. So I was really worried. And the last time I had internet issues, our internet was out off and on. Ugh, just, why can't everything just work, huh? All right, and I like that, I mean, they're not perfect. I like that. Okay, so I am going to, so as you can kind of tell a little bit, it, I was trying to do kind of like a, uh, what's it called? Um, a dream catcher effect. And so because it's still wet, I'm not going to cut it, but I will show you guys. Um, so all, all you do is you just kind of cut it to size and then see how, I mean, you're gonna cut off some of that pretty colors, coloring that you did, but that's okay. Um, and then, so you cut it. And then I use my crop -a dial just to punch the holes in the middle here for where I adhere the paper on to the art pages. And then you can add it to your art journal. So I don't know if you remember this art journal that I did a while back. Um, so I just added it to that. So I added the watercolor paper to the art journaling paper. So I'm just going to do it like this and then I'm gonna cut it when it dries because I don't want it to rip or anything. All right, and I used the heavy body gel to adhere all my little items here. Let me get, let me get a paintbrush real quick. So you just kind of add a glob on the back. And I don't add it completely I don't cover it completely. Just 
actually want to put that up just a tad. Because I did the little markers to where paper was going to be. So don't want to go past that or else it'll hang out of my journal. All right, and then this one up a little bit. Same thing here. And just like that. And then what I'm gonna do, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of the gel or is this gel? Yes. To the feathers. And then I'm going to add some glitter to them, just kind of on the tips of, of them. Can you see how I did that? Yeah, I did it too much. All right, clean this off because if I don't, it will ruin the brush. Okay, I'm gonna take the glitter. I don't have the number, but it is a Finnebear, um, I think it's glass glitter or something along those lines. And then just add it. like that. I'm going to use this one. I'm going to dump it off and then you can kind of, I'm going to take some of it off. Okay, I'm going to set that aside and I'm going to save the glitter. gosh it is so windy outside you guys okay I forgot to add the string so we're gonna add some string and yes oh yes I'm gonna add the string behind the thread or oh my goodness I'm gonna add the thread behind the feathers This is how I really kind of craft. I kind of do it backwards. So, I'm gonna take I can actually use this one here. This is the uh, upholstery thread. And I'm just gonna lift this up. Just put it dab there and just like that and this is thicker than um, see I pulled this one out this is just regular thread. It's thicker. This one's thicker, so. And I just kind of bundle it up. And this way you can add texture without adding bulk because you don't want your art journal to be super bulky. So I'm 
And I like it when it's really, really messy. And I'll show you guys in just a second when I'm all the way done adding the string. Okay, let me show you guys because I feel like I didn't show you. So I take it and I wrap it around my fingers just like this and then so it's kind of circular and then I just kind of bunch it up and then kind of pull it apart. <laughs> it kind of gives it a little bit of, I don't know, I don't know what it gives it but that's just how I do it. So let me show you guys. Focus, 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 focus. Well, I'm sure you guys can see, but and next, last, well not last actually, I gotta add my little title, is the um, sequence. Let me put the cap on this. Let me see how I did that. I just kind of randomly and see the difference, like, I mean, it's gonna turn out different. I think I added the, like the fuchsia pink color. I feel like I did on this one. Oh well. All right, the sequins are, them you guys I swear here. So we'll use these. I think these look like, I used the uh, ones from the um, I don't know what collection it was, but these look like they're from probably the Garden Fable collection, I want to say, because the colors Let me see if there's, I have a different one with the gold in it. Mm, this one has like a brown in it. Well, we'll just use these. going to use the blues for now and then when I find my sequence when I clean up then I'll add the other one so I just kind of randomly put them around guys for sticking with me I want to add one in the string kind of right there all right I will add the gold when I find it. And just move these aside. All right. 
last is going to be adding the title. Actually, I lied again. I'm going to add some white splatters with the frost. And so what I do is I spray it into a napkin, and I think I did this last time too. And that way it can get in the tube, and then you have a lot of um, color to splatter. So. One more little splatter here. There we go. Just like that. I'm gonna take some of that up from that. There we go. And I promise, last step is the title. So I hold the stickers. Here they are. Found them. <laughs> All right, I'll add those later. All right, so I added the, st the alpha stickers from this collection, the French Riviera collection, and I am going to Let's see what I can spell out. D R E A M E R. Perfect. This would be cute as um, like a canvas for our little girl's room as well. Actually, maybe I will do that with this one because this is kind of Abby's, um, well, she didn't really have a theme in her room, but I do have a dream catcher in there. And I have a lot of the projects that I've made in her room. She loves them. So I think I might add this to a canvas instead of the art journal. Alright, almost done you guys. Thank you for sticking around. Hello, did I forget the M? No, I was gonna say, did I forget the M? It was on my finger. All right, this is probably a little crooked. And I have um, done like watercolor look with the chalk edgers as well and the watercolor paper. So you don't necessarily have to have the watercolors confections to do this. You can just kind of use what you have. Although I would recommend getting the watercolor confections because they're just super fun to have. Especially if you like to color or your kids like to color because Prima has lots of um, different coloring books and things. So that is it. Let me show you guys. So any questions before I go? And I want to thank you guys so much for coming and watching. If you're watching this 
um, on YouTube or the recording on Ustream. We would love for you guys to come to the next show and sign in and chat. Everybody's so friendly. Thank you. And be sure to check out uh, myprimaplanner.com. So that sounds like so much fun. Thank you guys. Thank you. All right, I'm going to stop recording.